Today, our viewer question is, could you share some of the best fermented foods to eat in place of probiotics or even prebiotic pills? That's a wonderful question, especially because of the way it's phrased when she talked about probiotic or prebiotic pills. And put a pin in that, we'll come back to that in a minute, but just enlarging the biology of this. <clears throat> Excuse me, what we're talking about are foods uh, that in their preparation, in the process of creating these foods, um, bacteria and yeast are introduced and they do their usual biology. They break down sugars, they produce alcohols, they uh, start to digest the food. Uh, and then we eat that and that does two things. One, it makes the food a little easier to digest because the microbes have already started the digestion process. But very importantly, uh, we eat those microbes. And because we've got lots of microbes down in our intestine and in our microbiome, uh, it's a way to enrich uh, the, our own microbiome, uh, both in the number of microbes and the variety of them. So by and large, uh, eating fermented foods is a generally good thing to do. And I'll mention some of the foods that are, if there are frequent additions to your diet, you'll probably get some benefit from them. But let me just say that when we're talking about keeping your microbiome healthy, realize that you have trillions of organisms already down in your gut. Most of them are good guys. Uh, they love the uh, Prevotella species and others that uh, do not uh, promote inflammation. They don't promote cancer growth. They're part of the stability of the microbiome down there that uh, keeps the, the same populations in a pretty steady state there because the food should be a, a pretty steady state uh, flow of rice and beans and greens and fruits and vegetables, whole plant foods will create a nice stable microbiome. Knowing that, you should take comfort in knowing that when we take uh, probiotic pills, whatever, for to get more uh, uh, beneficial bacteria. The good guy bacteria, they're already down in your gut by the hundreds of billions and trillions. They're already down there. And your food nourishes them and regulates their balance. I view the food stream as kind of the orchestra conductor in a symphony orchestra that, that brings up the woodwinds and tones down the brass. Uh, if you eat a food with lots of sugars, you're going to bring up the sugar eating bacteria, uh, not necessarily a good thing. If you are still eating meat and eggs, all the carnitine and choline are going to bring up microbes like peptostreptococci and clostridia that turn that carnitine and choline into trimethylamine oxide to damage your, your arteries and increases risk for cancers, et cetera. So the food stream is really the most important thing. That is the prebiotic, it's the food you eat. And I kind of have to laugh you know, when I consider people taking prebiotic tablets, when really a uh, baked potato, some rice, some fruits, uh, those are really the main prebiotic. And certainly the legumes with their lovely resistant starches, the beans and peas and chickpeas and lentils, those are the prebiotics you ought to be focusing on. So I don't have much use for prebiotic pills as the question after uh, included there. Uh, the food is the prebiotic. Uh, now the probiotic are the actual microbes. And is it helpful to take them? Again, uh, someone compared the vastness of the microbiome population compared to what's in one of these probiotic pills is um, uh, draining all the water out of your swimming pool, the whole microbiome, and then adding a teacup of water back in that's in what's in one of these pills here. The, uh, they really have a fairly minimal, limited effect on our total microbiome. So I don't have uh, uh, much use for probiotic pills, but um, if someone's having chronic diarrhea, they're having chronic uh, inflammation from Crohn's disease or ulcer colitis, I have found uh, patients do respond to 60 days, 90 days worth of uh, probiotic uh, um, supplements, uh, but it's not like they have to stay on them forever and ever once the gut returns to normal uh, and the food stream is nourishing a healthy microbiome. Uh, you don't need to stay on probiotics uh, forever and ever. So, um, so all that said, it's really the food, it's the food, it's the food, as I've been saying all along, including 
when it comes to the microbiome. So that says, let's go back to the original intent of this question. How about fermented foods? Are they helpful? Sure they are. Uh, they're, they're pleasant, positive influences in the diet. And there's five or six of them that are commonly eaten. Let's go through some of them. Um, there are those that are made of soybeans, um, where soybeans are soaked and, and uh, processed in some way to let uh, yeast and bacteria grow and start to pre-digest the soybeans. Um, cakes of soybeans are made uh, and aged, and, and that's what tempeh is. And when you look at a uh, uh, cake of tempeh, you see the soybeans and you see these fibers and filaments. Those are the yeast and fungi fibers that have uh, started to grow there. And there's lots of bacteria and yeast cells, and most people find it a very pleasant, positive food to eat and crumble it up, put it in your spaghetti sauce. Uh, I'm, I enjoy eating tofu. It takes place of bacon and a and a, in a uh, TLT sandwich there, a tempeh lettuce and tomato sandwich there. So tempeh is a good uh, uh, fermented food. Um, you can uh, take those uh, soybeans, soak them, and, and add a particular type of salt and a yeast preparation, and that turns it into miso paste. Uh, and there's, there's microbes in miso paste that you can use as a base to make soups and broths, etc. Some microbes in there, though, if you make a real hot miso broth, you're probably killing off most of the microbes there. But as a cooking ingredient, you can use miso. Uh, there are classic uh, fermented vegetables, sauerkraut, uh, obviously, that uh, uh, is uh, cabbage shredded up, put it in a salt water solution, and, and the uh, usually in a porcelain vat, and in the and just leave it open to the air. And there's the yeast and microbes floating in the air that settle into the into the pot, and they start fermenting. It, it takes a few weeks, but uh, that will ferment the sauerkraut. Our friends in Korea do a similar thing with. Uh, uh, Chinese cabbage, uh, but they put in the cayenne and the various uh, chilies and they turn that into kimchi. And uh, again, it depends how hot it is, I guess, determines how many living microbes are really in that. But it's, I enjoy kimchi onto a salad or uh, with a sandwich. So, the, so that's another type. Um, the classic yogurts and kefir, um, which is, uh, uh, you know, it's classically made with cow's milk or goat's milk, but you can make plant-based kefirs um, with, uh, with soy milk and almond milk. Uh, I've seen uh, uh, various plant kefirs uh, and uh, they take the liquid uh, milk and uh, they put in grains of uh, little granules and they're really uh, uh, bacteria and yeast granules that go into the uh, to the, the plant milk sit for a few days and it's uh, slightly ferments got a slightly tangy uh, flavor to it but uh, kefirs would give you a nice variety uh, again um, and kombucha I'm not a great kombucha fan uh, but uh, uh, that's another one. That's the water that comes off of this, uh, uh, this uh, fermenting fungus. So these are all foods that have uh, uh, fermentation, at least in part of their preparation. And many of them have a healthy population of microbes. And they're, uh, they're beneficial uh, to add to your diet. They are not miracle foods. Uh, if you're if you're living on vegan Oreo cookies and energy drinks, um, just taking some fermented food is not going to magically make you healthy. You know, the, you, as Dr. Colin Campbell uh, says in his book, Whole, W-H-O-L-E, it's the whole food stream moving through your digestive system and through your body that's really going to determine your state of health. And to focus on one supplement or one particular food uh, misses the point. You know, the gorillas are eating this, this, this healthy diet of leaves and fruit all day. Yeah. And there's, you know, they, they vary their, their selections, uh, but by and large, it's a whole food plant-based diet and they, uh, they do quite well. We should kind of follow their leads. So uh, don't, you know, they're pleasant uh, additions to the diet, but don't give them more power than they deserve. Eat a healthy whole food plant-based diet and your microbiome pretty much take care of itself. But if you'd like to add these foods in, I think they, they carry a modest benefit and, and they, they taste good. So explore the world of fermented foods and enjoy them. Hi everyone, Dr. Michael Clapper here announcing our new format for our Q&A with Dr. K. Andy Hagen will be asking me one question that's been sent in by our viewers. So if you want to see if your question is getting answered, do join us for our Q&A with Dr. K right here. Hope to see you then.